Welcome to this video on routing and VPC. In this video, we'll explore how routing works in an AWS virtual private cloud, focusing specifically on root tables and subnets. Understanding these concepts is critical for designing secure, scalable, and efficient network architectures in AWS. Whether you're working with public-facing applications or internal resources, Mastering routing in a VPC gives you the control to direct traffic exactly where it needs to go. Let's dive in and break it all down step by step. Let's begin by understanding the foundation of routing in a VPC. Routing is what enables communication between IP addresses within a VPC. At the heart of this process are route tables. These tables define how packets of data are forwarded, whether it's between subnets, to the internet, or to VPN connections. Every VPC comes equipped with a default root table to get you started. Now, let's take a closer look at the default root table. This table contains rules for forwarding packets within the VPC. By default, any requests destined for IP addresses within the VPC's CIDR range stay inside the VPC. For traffic that needs to reach external IP addresses, the target is the Internet Gateway. Of course, AWS allows flexibility. You can create custom route tables and assign them to specific subnets, replacing the default configuration if needed. Let's take a closer look at how routing tables manage traffic within a VPC, using this diagram for reference. At the top of the diagram, you can see the route table ID, which is associated with the default VPC. Every VPC has at least one route table, which is responsible for determining where network traffic is directed. In this case, we're working with the default route table that comes pre-configured when you create a VPC. Below that, under the Routes tab, we see two important entries. Local route 172.31.0.0/16. This route ensures that any traffic destined for IP addresses within the CIDR block of the VPC in this case stays within the VPC. The target is marked as local, which means that the traffic doesn't need to leave the VPC or go through any additional gateways. For example, communication between subnets or instances within the same VPC will use this route default route, that is, CIDR block with all zeros. This route is for all other traffic that doesn't match the VPC's CIDR block. In this case, the target for such traffic is the internet gateway, this means that any traffic destined for external IP addresses, like accessing the internet, will be routed through the internet gateway. Now, let's break down how this works. If an instance in the VPC tries to communicate with another instance in the same VPC, the traffic will follow the local route, that is 172.31.0.0/16. .0 if an instance in the VPC needs to connect to an external service or website on the internet, the traffic will be routed to the internet gateway. In this setup, the internet gateway plays a crucial role in enabling communication with external networks, while the route table ensures that traffic is directed to the correct destination. By using this route table, AWS gives you the flexibility to manage and direct traffic efficiently within your network. You can add custom routes to this table for specific needs, such as routing traffic to NAT gateway, a VPN connection, or even peered VPCs. In summary, the local route keeps traffic within the VPC. The default route allows traffic to flow out to the internet via the internet gateway. Together, these routes ensure seamless and secure connectivity for your AWS resources. To connect your VPC resources to the internet, there are a few key requirements. First, the VPC must have an internet gateway. Next, the route table must include a route to that internet gateway. Lastly, the resource itself, like an EC2 instance, must have a public IP address. By default, subnets in a default VPC are public, thanks to the internet gateway entries already configured. Let's explore the difference between public and private subnets. A public subnet is designed for external communication. Its route table includes an entry for the internet gateway, allowing resources within it like EC2 instances, to connect to the internet. In contrast, a private subnet is isolated and lacks such an entry, making it ideal for hosting resources that don't need direct internet access, like databases or internal applications. 
But what if resources in a private subnet need limited internet access, say, for downloading updates or patches? This is where NAT Gateway comes into play. NAT Gateway allows resources in private subnets to make outbound connections to the internet while blocking unsolicited inbound traffic. Unlike the Internet Gateway, NAT Gateway is not included in the default VPC setup, so you'll need to configure it manually. Let's dive into how routing works within an AWS Virtual Private Cloud VPC by taking a closer look at this diagram. At the heart of this setup is the VPC itself. Think of it as a logically isolated network where you can launch and manage AWS resources. Within this VPC, there are two distinct types of subnets, public and private. Each serves a specific purpose in how resources interact with one another and with the outside world. First, let's talk about the public subnet, which you can see highlighted in green. This subnet is directly accessible to the internet, and that's made possible through an internet gateway connected to the VPC. The root table associated with the public subnet plays a critical role here. It includes a route that directs all internet-bound traffic represented by all zeros of the CIDR block, to the Internet Gateway. This setup ensures that instances in the public subnet, like EC2 instances, can send and receive traffic from the Internet. And of course, security groups are in place to control which traffic is allowed in and out of these instances. Now, moving to the private subnet, which is shown in blue. This subnet is designed to be isolated from direct Internet access. Its route table doesn't include any routes pointing to the Internet Gateway. This makes it a perfect choice for hosting sensitive resources, such as databases or internal applications, that you want to keep private and protected from the public Internet. So, how does routing actually work here? It all comes down to route tables, which are the key to determining where traffic is sent. In this diagram, the route table for the public subnet has an entry directing Internet-bound traffic to the Internet Gateway. On the other hand, the private subnet's route table lacks such an entry, ensuring that traffic remains confined within the VPC unless you explicitly configure it otherwise. Let's summarize what this diagram shows. A region that houses the VPC, an internet gateway connected to the VPC, a public subnet with a route table directing traffic to the internet gateway, a private subnet without internet access by default, an EC2 instance within the public subnet capable of communicating with the Internet. This setup highlights how AWS provides precise control over resource communication within and beyond the VPC. By carefully configuring route tables and gateways, you can design secure and scalable network architectures that meet the specific needs of your applications. With this understanding, you're better equipped to manage your AWS networking with confidence. To wrap up, Let's recap the key points about routing in a VPC. Route tables are central to directing traffic within and beyond the VPC. The local route handles communication between subnets, while the default route enables internet access via an internet gateway. Public subnets are designed for external-facing resources, while private subnets offer restricted internet access, typically facilitated by NAT gateway. By carefully configuring route tables and gateways, you can ensure secure, efficient, and scalable network communication, while private subnets offer restricted internet access, typically facilitated by NAT Gateway. Route tables provide precise control over traffic flow, ensuring security and scalability. By carefully configuring route tables and gateways, you can ensure secure, efficient, and scalable network communication.